hello everyone welcome to this video in this video we will be talking about various results based on transpositions so what are transpositions if you remember we whenever we have a two cycle then we call that a transposition why because it transpose or interchange one element to the other element right so uh, the effect of transposition is basically to interchange two elements a is being uh, mapped to b and b is mapped to a that is what we are doing we are interchanging these two elements so writing any permutation in terms of transpositions or in terms of two cycles is uh, advantages in uh, some uh, cases for example we uh, we we may just decompose a given permutation containing many entries into various transpositions con consisting of two digits two cycles right so uh, we have a next result on transposition it states that every transposition is the inverse of itself so that means if you wanted to calculate what is the inverse of a b so it is the inverse of a b so that means when you multiply both of them you would end up getting a identity permutation so how this is there let's see this thing suppose we assume that alpha represents our transposition where uh, it consists of two entries a and b a maps to b and b maps to a under the permutation alpha so this is a transposition then we wanted to see whether this is the inverse of uh, itself or not so for that we will uh, compose these two transpositions and we will see that whether this is equal to the identity permutation or not for that i am writing the first transposition in the array form as uh, a is mapping to b and b is mapping to a similarly the second transposition is the same thing now we wanted to multiply them now for a a is mapping to b here and b is mapping to a here so a maps to a so that is what i have written here then talking about b b maps to a and a maps to b so this b maps to b here so that means b maps to b so this is what this is the identity permutation why because a here maps to a and b here maps to b right so this is one way you can uh, show that that transposition is its own inverse another way is if you take two permutation uh, if you take the same permutation and compose uh, them right so in this case it, this would be the identity permutation why because you see when you apply any element onto the permutation alpha now alpha because this is a b it would map a to b right so first alpha a its value is equal to b and what is alpha of b alpha of b is again a why because uh, that is how we have defined a transposition so this is a so you that means you obtained alpha into alpha into a this is equal to uh, epsilon in uh, applied on to a so that means you see alpha into alpha that is epsilon so from here also you can see alpha inverse that is equal to alpha only this is what we wanted to say here okay moving on to the next result it states that every permutation in the symmetry group Sn, where n is greater than 1, this is a product of two cycles. So here uh, they are saying you can write every permutation in terms of transposition right so this is the result and this is true whenever we have symmetry group where this index n is strictly greater than 1 so it could be 2 3 4 and so on right so for the proof the proof is very simple uh, you know the identity permutation you can express it, it as the product of two cycles one is 1 2 another one is again 1 2 why because when you see 1 is mapping to 2 here and 2 is mapping to 1 here so obviously 1 is mapping to 1 and then uh, here the element 2 is mapping to 1 and 1 is mapping to 2 so that means you have 2 mapping to 2 and all the other elements if there are any elements up to n so they are all kept fixed under this why because they are not mentioned in this uh, transposition so they are kept fixed under this transposition so therefore you see the identity permutation could be expressed as the product of two transpositions which are 1 2 and 1 2 right now 
every permutation you we uh, we also know that every permutation of a finite set that can be written as a cycle or a product of disjoint cycles so that means we can write the given permutation as the product of a1 a2 up to ak the second one is b1 b2 up to bt Th and we can keep on doing like this until we have c1 c2 cs they all are disjoint cycles so that means no element is common within them and uh, right so this is how we may represent a permutation now we wanted to check that whether this could be represented as product of transpositions or not so this is what we will check here so by direct calculation you can see that the first cycle a1 a2 up to ak this could be written as a1 times ak so a a1 ak this is the first permutation then a1 ak minus 1 then a1 ak minus 2 and so on last one would be a1 a2 right so this is what we have done a1 ak a1 ak minus 1 and we keep on doing like this until we have a1 a2 right now why this thing is equal to this particular cycle let's have a look here so for uh, for this particular cycle what we are saying we have to show this portion is equal to this portion here correct so that's uh, let's see uh, here a1 maps to a2 right this is what we have so let's see here uh, when we move from a1 to this side we have a1 mapping to a2 right and uh, there then a2 does not map to any other element so therefore your answer is a2 right similarly you wanted to check whether a2 maps to a3 or not right so here you see a2 a2 maps to a1 here the next entry here would be a1 a3 so now we have to check a1 so a1 maps to a3 so that means here this a2 maps to a3 this is true so this would be true for all the other entries as well you can check this uh, by uh, solving out this particular uh, product of transpositions you will get back this product only right okay so once we have this so that means we have in a similar manner we can represent this cycle and this cycle as also the product of transpositions which is so first element with the last element first element with the second last element first element with the third last element we keep on doing like this until we reach first element with the second element right so it is b1 bt b1 bt minus 1 b1 bt minus 2 and so on until b1 b2 Similarly, C1, Cs, then C1, Cs minus 1, C1, Cs minus 2 until we reach C1, C2, right? So this is what we are doing. So we have represented every permutation as a product of two cycles or transpositions. In the next video, I'll be showing you example that how you can represent our transposition, uh, any permutation in, uh, as product of transpositions. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.